Today I talk about my experience with the AudioLab 6000 series. So the first thing I do when I review equipment is to make sure that the equipment can give the best performance. So I put it on a good clean rack and this rack is my own design, it's made out of maple and the second thing is to make sure that all the equipment is connected in the correct phase. Now in some countries you can only put your power plug in one way but here in the Netherlands we can do it in two ways and only one of them is the correct one. But if you connect everything in the correct phase, the earth potential equalizing currents will cause the least interference in the system. Now I know phase can mean different things in different counties, so please look it up before you comment. This little gadget helps me to find the correct phase. You plug in one side of your power cord into the phase tester and the other side into your equipment. And the equipment cannot have any other connections to other pieces of equipment and you don't turn it on. Then you push the button and when both red lights light up on the same side, you have the correct setting. Now remove the power cord from the socket, check where the hot lead is and that is the side that you mark, so you only have to do this one time. So today I'm reviewing the 6000 series from AudioLab and this is the 6000A, the 6000N Play and the 6000 CDT. Now you can stack these three pieces of equipment in different configurations, but there is a reason I do it like this. First off, with this slot loading mechanism I find it most accurate to put my fingers on top of the transport and then guide the CD in. This minimizes hand movement and reduces the chance of any scratches on the CD or on the case of the transport. So that's why the transport goes on top. Now to minimize interference from the electronics in the amplifier to the CD transport, I place the amplifier on the bottom and this means that the network player sits in between these two. Now obviously I value optimizing CD play over network play. Another thing I do to optimize performance is of course cabling, so let's start with the power cables. For the most power hungry equipment I use my most substantial cable. In my case that is the Oyeda Tsunami. These are extremely stiff and not very easy to handle, but no matter how big the power demand gets, the Tsunami can provide. Next up is the Furotec FP3TS20. Now this is my preferred choice for digital sources. It sounds detailed and clean. I only have one of those that is long enough to connect to the audio lab equipment, so I use that one on the CD transport and another Tsunami on the streamer. Another thing that I do that is maybe a bit more controversial is to put the most power hungry piece of equipment at the last position on the power strip and the least one up front. This way any equipment that would be placed after the power user won't struggle. I never AB tested this but I picked up this trick many years ago and it makes sense to me. It does not bring any extra cost so it's just a routine that I stick to. So my journey with the AudioLab 6000 started with the CDT 6000. With more and more reports that we are running out of new mechanisms for older CD players, I was hesitant to get myself one of the older, iconic players. I mean, why buy an older player when the risk of not being able to repair it when it breaks down is growing by the day. And another thing is of course the fact that the progress in separate DA converters is still going strong. So why not buy a new transport, hoping that it will give you a lot of playtime and whenever you want to upgrade, you just upgrade the duck side. So when I saw one on sale for a very low price, I immediately picked it up. Now the CDT is a dedicated CD transport. It does only one thing. It gets the digital information off of the CD and that's it. So why not just use a CD player as a transport, I hear you ask, and that is of course a fair question. Now that will work, but here's the thing. I have tried all my CD players as transport and the CDT sounds best. Why? Well, I don't know, but here's what I think. First of all, in a regular CD player you have much more electronics that can cause interference. The power section is probably used for both the transport and the DA part and maybe they made all kinds of compromises in the design process. Now for the AudioLab transport they of course had to make compromises too, but the complete budget went into designing the transport, nothing else. And on top of that there are three particular things that they spent this budget on. First off, the CDT uses built-in memory that reads ahead to reduce errors. 
The second thing is that the master clock is temperature controlled to reduce jitter. And the jitter on this transport is extremely low. And for those of you that still think this is all pseudoscience, tests have demonstrated that a difference of just 0.1 nanoseconds is audible. Some people are more sensitive to it than others, but jitter is definitely a thing. And the third thing, well, now that we have a clean jitter-free signal, we also want it to stay clean when it is transported from the CDT to the DA converter. So the signal is sent to the DAC via a differential line driver. Now you guys know I am not a technical guy, but as I understand it, this differential line driver is comparable to using XLR. It aims to reduce interference in the outgoing signal. And on the CDT, this only works on the coaxial output. Now, if any of you have a better explanation, please share it in the comment section. And the last thing I can say, another benefit from the read ahead buffer is that it will even read damaged CDs with ease. One of you guys even told me that it will handle cracked CDs. Now, I don't have any cracked CDs to try out, but the 6000 CDT definitely played some of my damaged CDs that my other integrated CD players did not. So the next audio lab piece I picked up was the 6000N Play Network Player. And I bought it because of a bit of a strange reason. I wanted a streamer that you did not have to control with an app. Now, this is of course not possible, but the 6000N has one feature that came very close. It has six programmable buttons that you can access without using an app. Now, why did I want this? Well, there are still people that do not like to work with apps or are so used to physical buttons that it's hard to switch. Also, there are still people that do not use smartphones, iPads or tablets, so they would need to get an iPad just to put on a song. Now, my girlfriend falls in the category of not having a smartphone and not wanting to be forced to use apps. This may sound strange, but if you know her, you will understand that all these modern appliances that control much of our lives is not something that makes her happy. And as you may understand, I like my girlfriend to be happy. Oh, and don't make the mistake by thinking that a 56 year old guy who is talking about his girlfriend has just picked up a new partner because of some midlife crisis situation. No, this year we are together for 30 years. We just don't care about getting married. Even stronger, we don't even live together. Anyways, that is why this particular streamer was perfect for her. So I picked one up. Now, after judging the streamer to be a good choice for my girlfriend, I decided to complete the series and went on the lookout for the matching 6000A amplifier. Now, this took some time because the popularity of this amplifier keeps the second-hand prices very high, but patience is a virtue in this hobby and I finally picked one up that basically came with an extra CDT for almost free. So now I was complete. The 6000A is a 2 times 50 watts amplifier in 8 ohm and 2 times 75 watts in 4 ohms. It has a built-in DAC, it has Bluetooth, it has a phono stage, only MM, but it has a phono stage, and you can use it as a preamp only or a power amp only as well. Now the 6000N streamer uses the same DAC as the 6000A, and the CD transport has no DAC of course, so you need the DAC in the 6000A, or you can use any external DAC of course and then connect it to the amplifier. The streamer has no digital input, so you cannot use it as a DAC for other digital sources, but for a clean setup, this complete audio lab setup looks and sounds great. The amplifier takes four digital sources, two times coax, two times optical, and it has three analog inputs, so there is plenty of room to add all the gear that you need. And this is the complete setup, the A, the N, and the CDT. And I like the design of this audio lab setup very much. They kept the front very clean, just a few buttons, a few knobs, clean display, and that's it. And if we look at the rear, there's also something that I appreciate very much. I've been talking about this before, but I like it when the designers keep the power sockets as far away as possible from the connections. And Audiolab has done a great job here. If we take a look inside the CDT, for example, you can see what a clean design and great separation between power and other electronics. And the same goes for the network player. 
Now the amplifier is a lot more crowded of course, but as you can see they kept all the power on one side and all the electronics on the other side. I am a big fan of that. Another thing you can see on the rear is that they did consider where all the antennas needed to go. No matter how you stack them, they will not obstruct any of the connectors. However, there is one thing that I did notice. If you have heavy and stiff loudspeaker cables, there is a possibility that they will interfere with the power cable and possibly with the digital inputs. You are better off using banana plugs, but these cables came pre-assembled with spades and I was not going to cut them off. And lastly, cable management is very easy if you only use the CDT and the network player. It just takes two digital cables, some speaker cables and the power cables. You can do without the network cable if you want because the two Wi-Fi antennas are very reliable. I ordered two cables at custom length and this makes for a very clean look. It could also be two optical cables of course. Now handling this setup is very easy. The CDT has the usual buttons and the network player only has six programmable buttons on the front. The front of the amplifier is more crowded of course, but it's still not too crazy and you can access more features than you might think. There are three knobs on the front of the amplifier. I did film going through all the functions, but some of the files got corrupted, so we will have to do with some of the footage that did survive. There is a volume knob of course on the right and a source selector on the left to switch between sources. And the third knob is a multi-purpose design. If you turn it, it will change between integrated mode, pre-power mode or pre-mode. Pre-power mode means the pre and power section are internally disconnected, so you can use it as a standalone power amp, or you could use, for example, connect a signal processor between the pre-out and the power in connections on the rear. Pre-mode obviously means you can use it as a preamp. All signals going to or from the power amplifier will be disconnected in this mode. So that is if you turn the knob. If you push and turn the knob, you can access balance mode for left and right adjustment, filter mode, this gives you three filter settings for the DA converter, fast, slow or phase. This mostly affects the roller frequency, I prefer the fast setting. If you turn it some more, you can enable or disable the trigger connections on the rear. Next is the standby setting. So when no signal is detected by the amplifier, it can go into standby modus after 20 minutes, one hour or never. It's up to you. And one more turn gives you the possibility to reset all these settings. And the last turn will show you the current software version. You can upgrade to a newer version via the USB port on the rear. And there is a headphone socket, but I did not try it. Now after all the praise for the design, and I really do like the design, there's also a few things that I just do not understand. First one is the color of the lights. Why not all three the same? Now there's one white one and two red one. Another thing is, and I don't know if you have noticed, but the streamer has no IR receiver. So if you turn the set on with your remote control, it will only turn on the CDT and the amplifier. Same thing when you want to turn everything off. I think that is a strange decision. Yes, you can use the trigger setup, but still. Talking about the remote, this is made out of pure plastic, but it has a very nice feel and it works for all three pieces. Just choose the equipment that you want to control on the bottom and you are good to go. Each of the pieces comes with their own remote control, so you have two spares. And then there's one thing that really got me frustrated so much that I almost want to advise you not to buy this streamer. And that is the DTS Play app. I do not understand why. After making such a great audio set, AudioLab connected themselves to the DTS Play app. This is the most frustrating piece of software that I have ever encountered. I could fill up a whole episode with just my frustrations with this app. And maybe I will do someday, but for now I do not want to frustrate myself again, so if you can, use another app. This one is pointless. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about sounds. Let's start with the streamer. I was pleased by the sound. It is okay for the money, but I preferred my Blue Sound Note 2i. I found the AudioLab streamer to sound a little bit mechanical, a bit uninspiring. What is strange, because I played it via the deck in the amplifier, just like the CDT uses, but when playing CDs, I was just blown away. This is truly amazing at this price point. 
I might even prefer it over my PS Audio New Wave deck. So that was an interesting discovery. Placement is more solid and there is some more substance to the songs. Some of the little background sounds on Roger Waters' Amused to Death were absolutely better resolved and a lot of the voices came forward much better than with the PS Audio. Now the PS Audio gave me some more air around the voices, but if you are a CD only guy, I can imagine that the Audiolab amplifier with the CDT would make you very happy. Now I used my Ocelia loudspeakers for the duration of the review, and I am sure nobody will part this Audiolab setup with a $12,000 pair of speakers, but I am sure it will pay off to pair this audio lab set with a very good pair of loudspeakers. This setup can go a long way. It sounds very smooth, rhythm and pace is very good and it displays a lot of authority. And what I mean by authority is that it will capture your attention by giving a good performance. And for me good means does it sound like the real thing? Does a human voice sound like a human voice? Does a trumpet sound like a trumpet? Or is it just the sound of a trumpet coming through the system? It is that level of reality that I am looking for in a system. And as far as price performance goes, this audio lab does a very good job and is an absolute steal. I also use the Bluetooth function. Now, normally I don't care very much for Bluetooth, but when I use my iPad and connect the sound to the amplifier via Bluetooth, the sound is pretty good. But most important, when I use the blue sound with Bluetooth, it mostly does not synchronize sound and image very well. And with the audio lab, it was spot on. And this is a function on the amplifier, so even without the streamer you can still use Bluetooth. I also use the Phono connection. It only accepts MM cartridges, but for an amp that already has so many connections and possibilities to also have a very respectable Phono amp built in, you can only pay Audiolab a lot of respects. I had some very long vinyl listening sessions last week. And lastly, I also tried my Zen music server. This is played via the streamer, of course, but the results were also very good. And all of this was done without connecting the Ethernet cable. The two Wi-Fi antennas are actually very good. So, to finish off this review, I am a big fan of the Audiolab 6000 series. I think it looks good, I think it sounds good, I think it has all the connections you ever want, it is easy to operate. Well apart from the DTS Play app, but I don't hold that against Audiolab. And it's overall just a very fine experience. And if you are only looking for a CD transport, you should definitely try out the CDT, even if you don't want the rest of the set. I would pick a different streamer myself, but it fits so well with the rest of the design that I do understand if you pick it up. And remember, I picked it because of the six programmable buttons on the front. I think it is a unique feature and that is why it is the perfect choice for my girlfriend. And that, my friends, is all I have for you today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, write something in the comment section, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.